What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Today, we're going to talk about Gaius. AKA the worst boss in Elden Ring history. The worst boss in the entire game. Let's get into it. <laughs> okay, so Gaius is one of the worst bosses I've ever fought in Elden Ring. Probably the worst. Okay, we'll just cut to the chase. This boss fight is a 2 out of 10. Let's talk about getting to him. Okay, getting to Gaius is truly... Getting to Gaius is truly painstakingly tedious, okay? Well, there are some positives about it, okay? The scenery is nice. You know, uh, the way the way you have to traverse the, you know, the terrain to get there is kind of cool. The, you know, the artwork and design is always 100% good. It's always good in this game. So all of that still stands true. But when you compare it to the rest of the areas in the game, getting to him is really tedious. The only, I would say the only cool part, there are only, there are two cool parts about it. Okay. So you start, you have to go to the Morth ruins. Okay. So when you're at the Morth ruins, you have to, it's not obvious. You have to go around the ruins and find a hole in the ground. Then you go through into the hole in the ground. Then you, you know, you make your way through a cave system and you come up out of the other end. Boom. And you're in, you know, Bonnie village. That's, you go from the Morth ruins. You kind of go underground and get to the Bonnie village. I like how they did that because it's not obvious. You have to go around. You have to actually look, Hey, where, where do I go? How do I get to Bonnie village? It's a cool thing you can stumble upon by finding this hole in the ground. You'll see messages on the ground with people pointing to it. So that part's really cool. The downside is the enemies are extremely annoying. You'll find, you know, holy sorcerers, the holy sorcerer mages that, you know, they, they, they use that, that holy magic, the rings and stuff, depending on your build, you're going to find anything each of these things differently difficult. Um, Bonnie Village has these assassins, uh, these tarnished assassins, and they they respawn. They're humans, and they respawn, and they're using that that you know that thick cutlass blade, and they have that that jump attack with it. If they hit you with that, it's game over. They can easily kill you. And the villagers in Bonnie Village, while you're fighting, you know, the tarnished or the humans that are left over, you're fighting these people with these cutlasses that just jump at you. The the whole town, like, converges on you, even though they die in one hit with the greatsword. They die in one hit, but they can just surround you and just, you know, start hitting you multiple, multiple times over and over again and just box you in a corner and kill you outright completely. So you have to be careful when you go through Bonnie Village. Bonnie Village is super annoying, but you do need the item there if you want to get to the secret area. You need the old mother emote. The old mother emote is north when you cross that. Uh, there's a gap in Bonnie Village. When you cross over that little gap in the canal, you go north of there. You'll see, you know, the purple item. You'll see this, the smoke from it, you know, the, the beam. And that's O Mother. You need the O Mother symbol to get to the secret area later at the back of the Shadow Keep. The same area... The same exact place where this boss is, basically, is going to be where the secret area is. Actually, you know what? The secret area is a little bit quicker to get to than this boss. Yeah. Getting to the secret area is quicker than getting to this boss. Because the secret area is at the back of the castle keep, but you don't have to actually traverse the, the castle to get there. You'll, you'll, you, you'll see, you'll see a shot of it. I'll have to roll on a shot of it to kind of explain it. So basically when you're getting to the back, the shadow keep back gate, you're going through and you get to the ruin, the church ruins and the church ruins. There's a statue of America and a headless statue of America. And in that statue, you use the old mother emote that you got at Bonnie village, you know, North of Bonnie village. It opens up the new area. I forget the names in this is kind of like game of Thrones. I can't remember. You go, it opens up the secret area, and then you have the whole area to explore there.
we're talking about the boss Gaius though. So for Gaius, you go through, you know, the church, you go through the ruins, you drain the water, you have to fight a boss, you have to drain the water, you have to trans tra traverse, you know, rooftops, you have to avoid falling to your death because it's all water. And when you finally make it through the puzzle part of the, you know, the, the ruins, the church ruins, you drain the water. When you drain the water, you have to fight a mini boss, you know, like a mid boss. So you fight the mid boss, then it opens up you know, a new area where the water is gone. And in the new area where the water is gone, you're going to have Mesmer Knights. And you know how bad those are to fight. So you're going to have Mesmer Knights. You're going to have, you know, flaming enemies. You're going to have Mesmer type enemies with flame powers. And they are awful because they're easy to kill. But if you make the wrong move, you will also get killed easier. Now, I did this before the buffs. We got buffs last night. I hope that they actually buff things for us but i did this i did this vanilla you know before the bus i did this like a week ago or when it you know when it came out <laughs> I, did it, I did it when it came out right so you get through all that you fight the mid boss but you're not done yet you have to go through you know the back part of the castle where you would normally get the mesmer but you're in like kind of like the back part of it so you have to get through that library area you know, in, in the castle where Mesmer is, the Shadow Keep, and guess what? There are the flame enemies, there are more enemies, there, there are the enemies that can grab you, all that BS, that's all there. You have to get through all of that again. And it's not over because then you have to go up to the top part and traverse this system of mazes and beams, ceiling beams. So there's like beams and ceiling beams, and it's a whole, it's like a system of mazes. I had to watch a guide to get through because. You walk up and down ladders, you fall down, you jump across ledges. In my video, I get to it pretty quick because I started recording after I figured it out. But if, you, if, you, if you're if you playing the game without a guide, and I try not to look up as much stuff as possible, if you're playing the game without a guide, you're going to have a lot of trial and error walk, walking all across these beams you know, on the ceiling. However, that is the second part that's cool because... Tra traversing these beams and, and uh, climbing across these beams and going through these beams, it also kind of reminds me of something that you might find in, you know, Castlevania. Like if you were have uh, Castlevania one or two and you made them 3D, actually, you know, Castlevania three is where you start off and you're in that church, you know, and you're going through the church right in the beginning of the game. It, it kind of reminds me of that where you have a, ver a vertical slice, you know, Castlevania was a very vertical game. You have a 3d vertical slice of, of platforming that is sophisticated. Um, in other words, it's platforming, but it's not like super Mario 64 platforming. It's like a sophisticated gothic type of scenario and you're platforming and it's not it's not as fluid or 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 uh dynamic as something like you would like a platformer game right you know what i'm trying to say so you go through that you're not done yet <laughs> you got to take the you got to go through these little stairs and you can easily fall off these stairs i did you could just run right off these stairs so finally you make it down you get to the boss okay we're at gaius you've made it you're at the worst boss in the history of Elden Ring. In the history, maybe, of the Souls games. I don't know. This boss is bad. This boss is bad. His opening attack is almost impossible to avoid. Again, I haven't found out, figured out a way to avoid it. So I just use the flask that, you know, gives you invulnerability for a time period so you can survive that one hit. If you, if he does hit you and you start rolling, you can potentially roll far enough away to where you could see what he's doing. But because of the way the camera angle is and how big of an enemy he is, you, you can't even see what he's doing half the time. You, you're, you're rolling and he's behind you and you can't tell what he's doing. And he's a mounted enemy. So he's charging all around, jumping all around this battlefield. 
And it, it's the worst boss fight because you're trying to catch up to him to do damage. Then he's doing combos to you. So I would relate it to, it's kind of like the Elden Beast. You know what I'm talking about? When you're fighting the Elden Beast and you're trying to get close to him, you're trying to get to the Elden Beast so you can do damage and he keeps doing these combos you have to keep avoiding. Well, this boss is even worse than the Elden Beast, okay? You're trying to catch up to him to do damage, but he's also jumping all over the place, shooting things at you. I, I mean, it's just insane, okay? And I don't even want to say that it's difficult because you can, you can easily learn these attacks and avoid them. You can. The difficult part is trying to get your hits in while he's doing these things. That's what's going to get you because you're so desperate to get damage on this guy because he's jumping all over the place that you're trying to damage him and you get hit. So this boss, you need to be really, really patient with and wait for your opening. There's no, I haven't found a really good way unless he's aggroed with a mimic or another player or he's he's finishing like the third strike of his combo. I haven't really found a good way to stick to him really close up like you can in some other fights. I, I tried with the crystal rot swords. I gave him rot. I did give him scarlet rot and I was hitting him with the crystal swords and I was like, okay, I'm going to do a close, you know, a close battle. I'm going to, you know, go in there and I, you know, I'm just going to get, get good. I'm going to go in there with my crystal rot swords and rot the hell out of this guy. All right, let's, let's rot his ass. Okay. I go in, I'm fighting him with the swords and I'm finding that he's moving too far away. He's moving too much. He's moving too far away. The best, the best damage that I was able to do to him was with the Comet. Not Comet Azura, but the regular Comet. So if you are a magic user, user, you're probably going to be able to kill this boss easier than a melee character because you can hit him with the Comet. It does a lot of damage if you're fully buffed and you have enough mana flask and you're good at dodging the co comet the comet strikes are going to do really well that's going to kill him um i tried loretta's bow loretta's longbow that that spell doesn't do that much damage to him i tried uh you know i tried a duel's moon blade that that uses up too much FP, you might as well just use the Dark Moon Blade. And I did beat him with the Dark Moon Blade because, like I said, you have to hit him from kind of a ranged attack. You kind of hit him from far away. Now, I did try a few other things on him. Now, you to interject, you can cheese him with the Stone Great Shield. You know, that Stone Shield. You can cheese him with the Great Shield. So, if you're good with the Shield and you, you want to, you know, if you're good with the Shield and you want to block and stuff, you can cheese him with that. I recommend doing that. If you if you have that great shield leveled up and you have a, a you know a colossal sword or some or spear or something to use with it, I would do that method because it's just not worth it. Or use the mimic. And if you use the mimic, you're going to need something ranged like a weapon art or something to hit him because he aggro's really easy. As soon as you hit him, he aggro's. The death poker works. The death poker works really good. Crystal rot swords work really good if you're really good at dodging. You could use crystal rot. If you're a mage, you can use comets. The comets hurt him pretty good if you're fully buffed. Um, arrows don't do anything. Now, I did. I did try to put him to sleep. So I did try the sleep. The sleep method, you know, that you could use on the gods can duo, etc. So I did see if you is it, hey, is it possible to put him to sleep? And I wasn't able to get him put to sleep. I think I hit him with at least fifteen or twenty you know, sleep arrows and he didn't go to sleep. And I threw at least four or five, you know, sleep pots at on him and he didn't go to sleep. So I'm, I, I'm guessing you can't put him to sleep. I tried. I know he, I know you could give him blood loss. I've seen him get crystal rot. I've given him frostbite. I haven't seen him poisoned, but I know for a fact, from what I can tell, you can't put him to sleep. So I tried some different things and tried some different strategies out, tried some different weapons the best thing that I find I found was using something like the Great Moon, you know, the Dark Moon Sword, Dark Moon Great Sword, where you slash from far away and it's quick enough. The Death Poker kind, you you know, you put the fire out and you hit it. It's really good, but it takes longer than the slash from you know the Dark Moon Great Sword. So the Dark Moon Great Sword worked out the best for me. Now you might have you might have good luck with you know um, 
Rolana's weapon, the, the, the twin blades, the twin blades, you'll see. I do an attack with the twin blades. It kind of messes them up. But you have to be careful because to get the full effect of the twin blade, you have to finish your combo. And as you can see, I didn't time it quite right. But it does do a lot of damage. If you're good, if you're a good duelist, you can use the twin blades. You can use the katanas. You can use the blood loss. I highly recommend using the mimic or using the great the great shield and blocking these attacks and using some kind of ranged weapon. If you're highly skilled and you don't, my advice: if you're highly skilled and you don't want to do, and you don't want to do a mimic or a great shield, I would use blood loss. Crystal, I mean, Scarlet Rot, Blood Loss. Yeah, so that way, you know, when you're not attacking him, his health is, is slowly deteriorating, of course. His his combos are terrible. They they go they go really, really far because he's mounted, so he'll attack you, attack you again, attack you again, attack you again, and it goes across halfway across the, the damn map. Then when he's done attacking you again and again and again, he charges around and you have to be on the, 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 you have to be on his left side. And, and I think you dodge this way is the only way to get around that. But he's constantly charging at you, jumping around this goddamn hippo thing. It's the most annoying thing I've ever played. I've ever fought in my life. I mean, dude, this, this guy is just like, do, 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 with this hippo thing. It just, he, he never stops. It never ends. There's never a break. He's just constantly coming at you and charging at you. And it's just the most annoying thing I have ever experienced. And when you're trying to do damage, he's constantly, you know, flying off the screen on his horse, a hippo thing, whatever. And you can't catch up to him to do the damage. Boss fight, two out of two. Nothing about, nothing about this boss fight is fun. Nothing about this boss, boss fight is awarding. He shouldn't even be there. If they erased him from the game, the game would be a better place. Hey, the next update, they just erased Gaius. The whole game would be better off for it. Get, get rid of this guy. There's <laughs> no point in him even being there. This is, the, this is terrible. There's there's no real dialogue behind it. There, there's no there's no adding to, to, to the story or anything like that. Just, just get rid of this guy. He's a terrible boss. In comparison, we can compare him to the other another mounted battle, which has a similar circumstance, which is Loretta. So like Loretta, Loretta is kind of hard to get to, right? You know, when you're in the Holic Tree. So Loretta is kind of hard to get to. And when you get to Loretta, she is a mounted, you know, enemy. However, Loretta as a boss is really cool. She has cool moves with arrows. She has cool moves where she's jumping around. It's visually appealing. You're in a, a, an arena where there's a limit. You know, the boss just can't run away from you like in, like the Elden Beast fight. You know, Loretta is like, you have to get in there. You have to dodge. You know, Loretta is a really cool fight and you get really cool reward and you get, you know, you get the uh, the bow attacks you know, the magic attacks and you get the, you know, uh, what is it? The Loretta's, um, you know what I'm trying to say? Loretta's, uh, like, uh, not a scythe, but it's, uh, you know, whatever y you get her weapon. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty cool. You get her weapon. It's intelligence based. It's cool. Okay. Loretta fight. Cool. This mounted fight, the worst mounted fight I have ever experienced. And it's not because it's not because of the difficulty, because I believe I beat him quicker than some of the other bosses. I beat him quicker than Mesmer. You know, I beat him quicker than uh, than Rolana. So it's not it's not the difficulty. It's just an annoyance. It's just it really is annoyance. Just think of just think of it when you fought the Elden Beast, how it was constantly too far away to attack or constantly running away from you and constantly doing things. Now imagine the Elden Beast, but speed up his movements times two. That's this guy. This guy's faster. He's jumping all over the place. He's ramming you with this, uh, this hippo thing, rhino, hippo, whatever he's riding on top of. It's ramming. It's jumping all over the place. The only thing I will say is that the second half of his phase is basically the same as the first. There's nothing. His his signature move where you know he crashes down as a meteorite, super easy to avoid. His second phase moves are just a joke. They're really easy to avoid. Again, they add nothing to the fight. 
they're 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 they add nothing to the dynamics of the boss fight. There nothing changes. He's still jumping around and doing doing dumb crap. He uses this little gravity wave thing and then he crashes into the ground. Other than that, there's there's hardly any difference in the fight. So even even the phases of this boss fight are terrible because the second phase doesn't even change anything. What would make this boss fight better is if he has if he had half half the amount of HP that he does have. And then you take him down to half life and his second phase. He gets a new, you know, a health bar and he's off the he's off the he's off the hippo and you just fight him on the ground and he's harder. That would be way better a fight than what we got. This fight just seems lazy and kind of pushed in there with, hey, this is a generic move set. Boom, you're a mountain enemy. This is it. You go, you know, two out of 10 on this boss fight. How to improve? What would make this boss fight better? Give him, give his mounted form half the HP. When you, when you defeat him, he gets off the mount and has a second phase where he has the full HP bar. That, 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 that would have been a better fight for me because then it would have changed the dynamics and you wouldn't have been stuck on this horse. You're stuck, stuck dealing with this hippo. Now, you can fight him on horseback. I wasn't able to do much to him on horseback because I'm not that great of a, like a, a jouster. But if, you, if you're a jouster in Elden Ring and you're good, you like fighting on the horse, you can absolutely fight him on the horse. I mean, you know what I mean, on Torrent. Because you can... And the other thing you could do on Torrent is he, he basically, he would never catch you if you continuously run and run and run. So if you want to kind of get a feel for him, start on the horse and just run away from him. And you can kind of circle around and get an idea of his move pattern. If this is the first time you're fighting him, that you can do that. You can get on Torrent and you can just circle around and run around and he won't be able to get you. So you, you can play around with that. If you're good at jousting and you're comfortable with that, you might have a better time on the horse. I prefer being I prefer being grounded. I don't I don't like jousting. The only jousting that I do is usually for dragons. I I joust on I joust the dragons usually because the, you know they're they're always flying and stuff. This guy I wasn't able to joust because of his move pattern. He's always knocking me off the horse or knocking my horse. So, that's my review of Gaius the boss fight in Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree. This boss is a two, 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 two out of 10 horrible worst boss in Elden Ring. Let me know if you agree or if there's a boss that's, that's worse than this guy, I would like to know what it is. And it's not the Elden Beast because this guy is worse than the Elden Beast. At least the Elden Beast is necessary, right? So let me know in the comments who, what boss is worse than this so I can know. That's the video. Thanks.